Hi everybody and welcome to a new amazing Mac stuff video. In this video we are going to see how to use the GGL BFG, which is a GPU version of the GTBFG object, to create some interesting shapes like this one. In order to do that we are going to use a JIT grid shape for the basic shape and a shader in order to apply the noise uh, to displace the vertices of this shape. We can achieve uh, these kind of results. Let's see some examples. So noise simplex, noise purling. Uh, we have some parameters to modify um, the various noises. Noise shell, cell. Yeah, this looks pretty nice. Noise checker, noise multi rigid. Looks pretty cool. Uh, Multi-hybrid. So these are all the noises that we have inside uh, the GGL PFG. And they produce some quite cool results. Oh, this looks pretty cool. Adoro, Voronoi, What's up, buddy? Voronoi Crackle. That's one of my favorite. And and some more and some more noises which we are not to we are not going to see all of them. I mean there are not so many more, but uh, yeah, this is also another interesting one. Okay, so yeah, this is what we can achieve with this little patch, and uh, let's jump into it. So we have got here a new patch, and uh, let's start patching. First of all, let me get my world plus camera thing template because I'm actually not going to recreate the world and the camera. Uh, the only interesting thing here is that the um, camera is connected to a GTANIM drive which allow us to move around with the uh, WUASD uh, and QZ keys. We can move around uh, in our virtual world. So then what do we need? Well first of all surely we need the, the GTL grid shape object that's connected to uh, the rendering context, which is called game, for me. You can call it as you want, of course. And uh, let's give it maybe some dimensions, 512 by 512. That's a power of 2, but it uh, doesn't, doesn't need to be a power of 2. And, okay, then what else do we got? Uh, well, maybe the shape. Uh, let's give it the shape of a sphere. This is, anyway, the shape it has by default. And... Um, Maybe a color. Let's mm, no, we don't really care about the color. Uh, let's give this uh, a shader attribute because we are going to apply a shader to the shape. Let's call the shader shady. Uh, let's me let's make the speed of this a bit faster. Okay, cool. So um, okay, so then we need probably we need the GGL shader object in order to shade these uh, these in order to modify the the shape. So we link it anyway to the rendering context and we give it uh, a name which is Shady and then we give it a file that it takes as an input which uh, we don't know yet, we don't know yet what's the file name so let's open it, let's save it on uh, the same folder where this patch is and I will call this uh, like uh, glpfgtoot.jxs so glbfgtoot.jxs, so I can give it now a file name, uh, which will be glbfgtoot.jxs. And now we should, we should have this file inside. Okay, pretty good. Uh, what else do we need? Well, surely we need the gglbfg object, since this is uh, kind of the protagonist here of this patch. So gglbfg, uh, this also needs to be tied with uh, context. And... Uh, Okay, so let's see what attributes do we have with this object. Well, first of all, surely we are going to use the basis attribute to choose which noise we will have. Uh, let's go with uh, let's actually go with FBM. It's actually a good one. Let's actually hard code this attribute on the object. So fractal dot FBM. And uh, let's see actually the help file of this object to see which kind of attributes do we have. We have the time. Which uh, which sets uh, it's kind of yeah as you can see 
the output of the GGL BFG in, on this window here. So the time is kind of modifying, um, the, it's like when we modify the third dimension of a GBFG object, I think. The zoom is like the scale of the GBFG, so we're just uh, zooming inside this function. The colorize makes something cool, which is actually what we are going to do also on uh, on our shader. Uh, we can also even change the palette and so on. And then we can choose, of course, which noise do we want. And then there are the fractal uh, noises have some parameters like fractal params. If they are set to zero, it means that they are not used in this particular noise. So, for example, this last parameter, which is the gain, is not used. And then this, uh, there are other uh, parameters for the Voronoi noise. And I think that's it. Then we can also take a look at the full source code, which is, of course, uh, written in JLSL. So we can actually learn something from it. If you ever want to delve into this kind of stuff, it's pretty interesting. It's kind of a, a math intensive, but uh, probably doesn't scare a lot of you. Okay, so let's close this. Don't save. And uh, let's activate our PFG. So let's receive our metro. And now we have to create a texture to kind of send a texture inside the GGL BFG. To get a texture as an output, so we can look at this text at this output texture using GTP window. So let's create this will be our shader. Let's create our texture. So GGL texture game. Uh, let's make this 512 by 512. Um, let's actually make this rectangle. Z mm, no, actually no. Let's maybe just give it that up zero. Oh, I forgot to write dimension. So this should be it. Oh, sorry for this noise. If you're hearing a noise, uh, sorry for that. Anyway, this goes inside here and we get our function in return. Let's actually, let's actually create the time parameter for this. Uh, let's modify the time attribute for this GGLB, GGLBFG. God, this is such a mouthful. And so this will give us the millisecond since the clocker object was created. Let's divide it by, for example, 5000. And let's set this as the time parameter for the GPL, uh, GGL PFG. I think I will just call it PFG from now on. So that's it. The function is moving. So pretty cool. Now let's create a zoom parameter, which, as we saw, uh, is like the scale of the GPFG. And uh, good. We are pretty good. Let's actually create another another texture. So GGL texture game. This is the one that we will apply to our shape. So name text zero, and uh, let's connect it here. For the moment, this will be it. So let's go inside the shader now. Oh, no, first let's actually apply this texture to this object. So texture text zero, so we can read it from the we can read it from the shader. As you see, it didn't apply it because we now, rep uh, if we just delete the shader attribute, it now applies the texture to the object. <coughs> if we use the shader, we're actually replacing the, the fixed pipeline uh, of OpenGL, so we are actually have to write our shader ourselves. So let's go inside the shader. Uh, first of all, we need the parameter to bind uh, to can kind of access the texture inside the shader. So let's do it. So param name equal uh, text zero. This doesn't need to be the same of our text throughout there. It's just uh, uh, let's actually uh, let's actually call it the noise text to so make this explicit. Uh, this will be of type int because texture inside uh, max GLSL are of type integer. And anyway, if you don't know this stuff, I made some articles about this, uh, which are on my website. I will uh, leave the link in the description, so maybe check it out. So type int, and then what else we got? The default value, which will be uh, zero. Because this is the first texture that we are passing. Okay, so this is pretty much it for the moment. Let's actually make uh, version 1.2, just, just for fun. Okay, let's now bind the parameter to the uh, program in which we want to use it. So bind param, uh, the name of our param, noise text, and the program to which we want to bind it, which is the vertex program, the vertex shader. So 
Done. Now inside the vertex shader, so here we have to declare this texture as a uniform. So sampler to the rect. And uh, let's call these, uh, uh, let's, yeah, we have to give it this name, so noise text. Okay, cool. Now, inside the main, we want to access this texture, but we want to get just one value from this texture because, uh, anyway, all the four planes of this texture are uh, filled with the same value. So we are just going to get a float out of this, let's call this noise, and we have to use a texture to the rect function to read this texture, so noise text. And we need some texture coordinates to actually read this texture and dot x. So let's create those texture coordinates. This will be a vector 2 because there are x and y, actually s and t, are called inside JL cell, but it's basically the coordinates of our texture for every vertex of the shape. These coordinates are already inside the grid shape object, we just need to access them. We can access them like this. So first let's declare the variable text code, and then we have to say uh, gl multi no gl texture matrix zero multiplied by gl multi text card zero is this correct of course not of course not is this a uh, oh yeah that's it the c is also uh, is also a big c cool uh, let's now try to pass the color of uh, our shape as the noise. So let's do like this, back 4, back 3, noise, uh, 1.0, okay, cool. So now we are using the color, uh, uh, we are using the noise to set the color of uh, our shape. Cool, as you can see, actually, uh, the color is not uh, interpolated between the vertices. That's because we didn't activate the smoothing and uh, the smooth shading attribute. So let's do it, and now it's interpolated. Little trick. So back here. Now we want to pass the. Um, uh, we want to modify the vertices of the shape using the noise value. So let's do like this. Let's get. Let's get the position of the vertices of the shape in camera space. Again, if you don't know what camera space. Same link articles, what is a shader inside Max, how, how a shader work, and this will also tell you what are the different spaces in which we can work. So let's transform these uh, vertices in camera space. So vector, vector, uh, pos. Let's call these, uh, uh, so let's um, call the GL model view matrix to transform the, we multiply this by the GL vertex. And we get, actually this is a back 4, sorry, that's a back 4. It's okay, so now this position is in I space. Let's actually specify it, pause I space. Okay, and our camera space is actually the same. And uh, okay, now we need to get actually the normal. The normal of this object, because we are going to display the, displace the vertices on the direction of the normal. So normal equal GL normal matrix multiplied by GL normal. So also the normal, if when we multiply them in um, for the GL normal matrix, they will go in camera space, because by default they are object space, like the vertices. Again, just refer to the link in the description for an explanation on that. Um, cool, then we have the normal, we actually have to normalize them, so normal equal normalize, normal. And uh, cool, now we can use them for to create a new pos. So back for new pos, uh, basically will be like this plus, uh, yeah, equal to pos i space plus normal per noise. Cool, uh, oh yeah, of course. This is actually this is actually a back three, so we need to make it a back four. Uh, right, and then we can instead of using the f transform here, we can do gl projection matrix uh, multiplied by our new pos. So let's see. Yeah, it's working. It's working. Cool. Uh, okay, this actually looks good. Lex, uh, I just want to make you notice one thing that here, basically, this is where the noise kind of. Uh, let's actually, let's actually multiply for a smaller value. Okay, so this is where the noise kind of ends, and we have that the shape goes uh, 
the shape goes like this there is like an aperture inside because this is where the noise kind of uh, touches its edges and the edges don't coincide so this we get like an aperture here in order to fix that we have to do one thing we have to go inside our texture and say uh, wrap mode instead of clamp edge we have to make it mirrored repeat the problem with uh, using mirrored repeat here is that uh, we cannot use a rectangle one when using mirrored repeat so first of all we have to give it rectangle zero and then we can use wrap mirrored repeat is this how it's called um, the problem is that I think now it's reverted back to rectangle one exactly so we maybe let's just say to this adapt zero okay okay that's working and now let's also give it the dimensions that we want because now it will not get any more the dimensions from the incoming texture so cool the problem is that now inside the shader we are using a, a sample to the rect so we have to simply use sample to d in order to transform these into normalized coordinates of a texture cool as you can see the texture is working again now, if we multiply the texture here by, uh, by a multiple of 2, then we will not have this aperture anymore. It's a bit like what we did in my previous tutorial when we uh, read the, the BFG noise uh, using a, um, a cyclic function. How do you say? Not a periodic function. Then we were actually doing the same thing. So we are now using instead the uh, mirrored repeat attribute of the texture in order to read it. Uh, in a mirrored way. As you can see, the, the noise is perfectly mirrored. Cool. Let's actually make this an attribute. So let's create a new one. Param name equal. Uh, let's call this uh, maybe the frequency of our noise. Uh, yeah, basically this will be kind of the frequency of how many times we read the texture. Uh, type will be float and default. Uh, let's set it to 2.0. Let's close this. Okay, now let's pin this parameter, let's actually copy that, let's pin this parameter to the, to the vertex program. Okay, so uh, inside the vertex program we can now access it, so frac, uh, sorry, it's only from float uh, frac, cool, and now we can use this instead of uh, a fixed number, we can just use frac. So now if we go outside here and we create a message with written param frac dollar one, we can modify how many times we read this texture. So well, and they must be power of two, otherwise we still get the we still get the the opening inside the shape. So if I say three, as you can see we still get the opening because it's not wrapping perfectly if I say for uh, should be better then it wraps perfectly okay cool um, then we can still modify the zoom of course okay so cool uh, now let's actually color our shape so inside the GGL shader let's instead of passing the front color like uh, simply the color of the noise let's do like this let's create a back four Let's use the absolute value of the sign, for example, of noise.x multiplied by a number, for example, 3.0. Then abs of uh, the cosine, for example, of noise. Dot, actually, noise is a float, we don't need to write noise.x. So, noise multiplied by 0.4. So, let's, I'm just putting some random numbers now. And I think I'm missing some parentheses here, like here. And then again, absolute of uh, the cosine, the sine again of noise multiplied by 10 plus 1000 to create an offset, and then 1.0 for the alpha. Okay, cool. Now we are getting there. Nice. Uh, let's actually remake the noise because default. Cool. Uh, let's actually create some values to 
change these uh, uh, numbers from the outside patch, right? So let's go up the, uh, up here. Let's actually create this as a vector free. So param name equal uh, colors frex because this is kind of the frequency also of the noise. So color maybe frex. This is of type uh, vec3 because it's three numbers. Default, this will be equal to, uh, uh, let's just write it, one, one, we don't need a comma here, one, okay. And now let's actually bind it to the vertex program. So color frex. All right, uh, actually, I actually like to have everything indented in a nice way. Okay, so here we can actually use uh, color frex dot x. Here color frex dot y. And here color frex dot z z. Uh, ships. There is an error, sure, because I never uh, declared this attribute here. So from uniform back three, color frex. All right. So it's working. It's working. It's working. So now if we go, if we go outside here and we create like a pack, param color frex, and then three floats, should be able to modify these colors using uh, uh, these frequencies. So let's see. Oh yeah, maybe uh, if I connect it, will be definitely a little improvement. Okay. Probably made a very worried face at this point, right, right guys? So, uh, it seems to be working. It seems to be working properly. Um, okay, so we can zoom in here. We can change how many times we read the noise. Can change even the type of noise, and we can get some interesting results. Uh, let's let's go one second back inside the shader. Yeah, let's actually write zero here. I think this was creating a bug because we are summing. Uh, this should should be at zero. De definitely, it should be definitely at zero. So let's see getting some different results. Yeah, I think there was there was a kind of a glitch here. I don't know if you noticed, but this was created by that. The fact that we were summing uh, something to the fourth component of the position value, which we should not do. This should we always leave back to the original component, which should be one usually. Anyway, uh, yeah, now it's working properly. Uh, if you remember in my patch before, there was a kind of a gloom effect that's simply achieved by using a uh, a ggl node game uh, capture one name nodey so we have a node we can actually give it also the fsaa attribute and then we can render this to node inside instead of rendering it to um, to our rendering context so video plane game transforms that two this we get the same stuff right or maybe let's erase the color to a black cool and uh, let's see inside between these two guys let's use a ggl uh, pass nodey and fx name bloom and then we can play a bit with uh, the threshold uh, the blur width i will set to two i think it's a good value here so blur width equal to Threshold, we can adjust it using a, a message box and a float number. And right, there we there we have it. So, there we are. We got uh, what I showed you in the beginning. And that's how we got it. You can play around now using different, uh, different type of noises. And you can definitely have a lot of fun. Now, let's take the border noise. Yeah, that's my buddy. 
how we can uh, kind of have some interesting results here. Some less interesting, some more interesting, but definitely different results. So, yeah, good. I leave it, I will leave it at this. So, thank you for following, guys. Uh, if you like this video, you can consider to support me on Patreon. There are a lot of patches there which I don't share publicly, uh, only for Patreons. And uh, you can support me and basically make me do more videos and research more and do everything I do but more. So, thank you for following again and see you in the next video. Ciao! Thank you.